Hampshire, abbreviated Hants, is a southern county of England, bounded north by Berkshire, east by Surrey and Sussex, south by the English Channel, and west by Dorset and Wiltshire. The area is 1,623 square miles. Nearly half the county consists of high chalk ridges and grass-covered downs ranging from 250 to 850 feet above sea level. Winchester is the county town. A vast forest area stretches across the south. The New Forest and the Forest of Beer. The narrow strait called the Solent divides the Isle of Wight from the mainland, but the isle is part of Hans. The principal rivers are the Avon, the Test, the Itchin and the Mearn, which flow into Southampton water. In point of fact, Hans has grown around the maritime entries of Southampton water and Christchurch Avon which, with easy access to the chalk high grounds, encourage maritime trade and intercourse and have done a way back to the early days of English history. Relics have been found in many parts of the country, which can be matched by numerous finds in northwest France and doubtless were the objects of early trade. In making a tour of Hans, most people enter by the northeast corner from the London Basin. Here we find the home of the British Army in Aldershot. Other than that, Aldershot has no history. Much of the surrounding heathland is devoted to army manoeuvres and training and has thus been spoiled. Otherwise, it does not matter for it is poor agricultural land. To the west, we find Basingstoke, a manufacturing town and an important road and rail centre. Around here is some lovely country, undulating, good farmland. Through this open rolling country, we make our way by what was an old Roman road to Winchester, literally the very centre of the country. Winchester is the very germ of the British Empire, once the stronghold of the Celts, the Romans, the Saxons. It is the city whose princes, victorious over the Danes, became kings of England. All the peoples that have contributed to the history and development of southern Britain have met and learned to work together in the ancient centre of Winchester. Today, it is a city which remains virtually unspoiled. The main thoroughfare is dominated by the giant statue of King Alfred, whose capital Winchester was a thousand years or more ago. In the castle is the traditional seat of King Arthur, where the round table has hung upon the walls for over 500 years. East of Winchester, as far as the Sussex border, lies a broad stretch of country which is exclusively rural. Wide open farmlands, rich soil, productive of good crops. Making our way down the eastern border of the county, through the forest of Waterlooville, we come to the top of a downland hill and look down upon Portsmouth.
Portsmouth may mean the birthplace of Dickens. Or the Royal Naval Dockyard. Or HMS Victory. Or half a hundred other things that the Englishman should know all about. There is little to suggest that this great naval station was built up slowly by one sovereign after another through toilsome centuries of development. It is now a modern place. On the high ground above the town, one finds the old fortresses some of them still in use. And towering above is the great slender Nelson Monument. The Isle of Wight, with its famous needles, lies green and tranquil across the narrow water. This is the island that inspired the pen of Tennyson. The Romans found it pleasant enough to keep them there for 400 years. There is little of industry to be found on the island, apart from agriculture, except yacht building. Cowes is the mecca of yachtsmen, and the headquarters of the Royal Yacht Squadron. Most of the places round the coast are devised for holidaymakers. Past the island and up the Solent sail the world's greatest liners and the humblest tramp steamers, bound for the great docks at Southampton. Southampton is not a beautiful city. It has no inspiring buildings, but by its harbour and docks, it's a town of many tremendous memories and romantic attachment to the sea. It's a place of great comings and goings, of great business, great ships and great events. Beyond the docks, the green forest is the same, the new forest which stretches for miles north and west of Southampton. For many generations, this part of Hampshire has been forest land. Here, King Rufus was killed by a hunter's arrow. An inscribed stone marks the spot. Though the forest is not as great as it was, it covers a vast tract. Here one finds wild ponies. Herds of wild donkeys are also found. Each year, the ponies and donkeys are rounded up and branded with the owner's mark. In the depths of the forest, one can often see the curious new forest pigs, which dig and root after acorns. It was the timber of these forests which provided shipbuilding material for our earliest navies, dating back to the days of Alfred. Bewley, no doubt, is the most picturesque of all the new forest places, situated on the river that bears its own name. Nearby, at Buckler's Hard, you'll find old timbers going down into the water, rotting and covered with weed. On these once rested the stout oak-built ships, which helped to found the British Empire. The Agamemnon, the Swiftsure, and the Euryalus, whose guns thundered at Trafalgar. And now, to finish our tour of Hampshire, we will go to Bournemouth.
England has certainly no finer seaside place, for by the climate it enjoys and the amenities which have been provided, it is an all year round resort. And you can all take a holiday in this glorious part of England if through your national savings groups you save hard to do so.